God bless you, family. God, well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Sam Lopez, and I'm in the building for one more session for this week. And I'm glad and I'm happy that I'm alive today. And I hope you're glad and happy that you're alive today. Today's a new day that God has taken us this far. If you ever needed to remind yourself of how good God is, look at your past. Don't look at what you did in the past. Look at what God did in your past. And today, I was thinking about it. I was like, does it pay? Does it benefit us to think about the past? Because I know for sure we can't live in the past. Even though a lot of people are kind of like living in the past, they don't want to move forward. But look what I wrote. The name of this morning, Devo, is called Think Back. Will it benefit you to look back? That's the question. Will it benefit me or will it benefit you to look backwards? That's the first question to think about. Does God, most importantly, does God want you to live in the past? I already know. I can hear you people saying, no, nah, God doesn't want us to live in the past. But some people might think that living in the past, right, is the thing to do. Realize this, that if you live in the past, you can't be in the present and you definitely can't get to your future if you're stuck in the past. But does God want you to live in the past? And lastly, why would you choose to look back? Anyway, why would you choose to look back? We're going to be in Psalms 143 verses 3 and 6. We're going to camp out there, but I'm going to start from verse 1. I'm going to take Psalm 143 verse 1 to verse 6. But the key verses are 3 to 6 on this morning Devo. I want you to look at something that I learned a long time ago. And it's good to read the Psalms. Listen, if you need relief, if you need some kind of pressure release, if you need if the world is coming at you like heavy, Psalms and Proverbs are the go-to books in the scriptures. And like I always hear people say, if you don't know what else to do, if you don't know what else to say, say the name of Jesus. But Psalms and Proverbs will take you to places that you never would have imagined you would be in your victory in God and Christ. I'm just saying. Thank God for another day. Yes, brother. Brother Ricky, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Thank God for another day. That's right. We're here. Um, so let's get it moving. Let's get it going for the glory of God. If you have any questions, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests anytime during the live, or even if I'm not live and you're watching this and listening to this as a replay, don't hesitate. Leave your comment. Leave your questions, your concern, your prayer requests, and I will pray for you if you have a prayer request. If you can't reach me for whatever reason, maybe the rapture happened by the time you are listening or watching, you could always go to live.soulwinnerswithaz.org, and on that website, there's a page that has a live chat, and it also has a place that you could click where it says prayer requests, I believe it says, and on the prayer requests, it'll be privatized. So I know a lot of people want to make comments a lot of people have concerns and questions. Some people don't even agree with what I'm saying, and they don't want to put it on blast on the public. So there's ways that you could inbox me behind the scenes on all the social media platforms, or if you're on the podcast, there should be a way to connect with me from whatever platform you're listening from. Um, there's too many to name, so I wouldn't even attempt to name the platforms that you could possibly be listening to the podcast from. But I welcome you all. In the name of Jesus, thank you for coming through to the Morning Devo. Uh, I'm believing today that God's going to move in a way that he has never moved in people's lives before. Why? Because we're going to think this thing out. We're going to think about something. We're going to think back. You know, there was a rapper when I was growing up. Uh, his name was Buckshot Shorty, but now it's Buckshot. And um, he has a verse, uh, let's take a sec to think back, right? Because sometimes we have to think back. At the good times, think back even at the bad times, but most importantly, think back from the time where you were, let's say like 10, 15, 20 years ago to the place where you are now. There should be a difference from that time to this time. There should be things changing. And if you're in the kingdom of God, you know, just as well as I know, that things have changed for the good. Because the Bible says God would turn things, change things. He would make things good for those who love him. Amen. He would turn the good things towards us and mercy, grace and all that will follow us. 
for those who believe, right? If we believe in God, you could look back and see the handprints of God. I heard it said a while ago that what God did in the past is his resume of what he can do in your future and in your present, right? So, you Jazz, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. What's up with you? So let's go for it. Let's pray. And then we'll take a minute to share this out. When we come back after the minute, after we share this out to as many people as possible. If you're on a podcast, share the podcast. If you're on a live stream, share the live stream. If you're on YouTube, share the YouTube. Share this out. And if you know people that are not on social media like that, send them straight to live. That's so winners with a Z that ORG. And then after that, we'll come back and we'll be in Psalm 143 verses 3 to 6. But I'm going to start at verse number 1 because I want us to see the whole like idea, the whole thought process behind the psalmist. So we can have this Selah moment. We can ponder and think about what God has done in your life and in my life. Father, I thank you that although all my past is not pleasant, and I know a lot of people that are watching and listening that their past is not pleasant either. either. But when we see your footprint, when we see your, your fingerprint on our lives from the time we were born to the time right now, we give you glory, honor, and praise. At least I give you glory, honor, and praise for taking me out of things that the world would say I would never get out of. Taking me out of things that I myself in my way of old way of thinking would say I would never get out of. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for peace. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord Jesus. I speak that over every single family member in my family and every family member that's representing right now as they're listening and watching. I pray a blessing, a hedge of protection in the name of Jesus over their lives as they go and they come and they, you know, explore the world. I pray a hedge of protection over their minds physically, emotionally, and spiritually in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ. And I pray, Lord God, that you set forth your arcing angels and your ministering angels and your warring angels to be on full alert to the assignment that you have assigned them to be and to do in our lives. For my brothers and sisters all around the world that are going through things, um, give us a chance, Lord God. Give us an opportunity to look back and see where you have worked in our lives from the very youngest part of our lives to the very oldest and to the present time right now. And I pray, Lord God, that you would do a great work and a new thing in our hearts and minds today in a powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Let's go for it. When we come back, we'll take 60 seconds, share this out, help a brother share this, and then we'll come back to Psalm 143. We'll start from verse number one and end at verse number six. We can do that, right? Let's be, Let's do it. I'll be right back. Man, let's go for it. Morning, Devo. Thank you for hanging out with me. Listen, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that these Morning Devos happen pretty much every Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes when I'm not live, keep your brother in prayer. I might be in some kind of situation where I, I can't get to the studio. I might be in trouble. I might be sick. I may over, have overslept. So continue to pray for me and my family, and I'll continue to pray for you and your family as we get together for these morning Devo sessions, right? I uh, just have to put that out there. This is not a show to me. This is actually a morning Devo, and I'm literally doing it live with you. And for all those that know me, you know that it is what it is. I'm live. We're doing it. We're going to go to the Word and see what God has for us. 100%. I'm 100% relying on Holy Spirit God to move this to where it needs to be moved in our minds and in our hearts. Psalms 
143. Let's start from verse number one. Verse number one. Amen. Let me get to. I want to put it on the screen. And if um, you're listening from the podcast, you won't see the visual, but you could also click on the link where it says that we're live on. So that way you can click on the link and see the visual if you want to do that. Amen. So let's go for it. Let me just get this ready and we'll just press. All right. Bible says in Psalm 143, this is the amplified version. Verse number one says, hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my supplications. Listen to my my prayers. Listen to how uh, what's happening around me. In other words, listen to what's going on. Answer me in your faithfulness and in your righteousness. Verse number two, and do not enter into judgment with your servant. For in your sight, no man living is righteous or justified. Psalmist is very honest, is very clear with his petition. He wants the Lord to listen to him. And how many times do I pray and I ask God, listen, can you please give me a, a hearing? Can you listen? Amen. And this is the same here. Listen to my supplications. Justify that word right there we see in, in the last word of verse number two. Justified is when God saves you and forgives you for all your past sins as if it never happened. Just as it never happened. That's justified. Let's continue. Verse over to the other side here. Verse number three says, For the enemy has persecuted me. He has crushed my life down to the ground. He has made me dwell in dark places like those who have been long dead. So you can see he's going through some things. How many people got enemies that are persecuting you? How many people have enemies that want to crush your your life and crush your dreams and throw you down to the ground? He has made me dwell in dark places like those who have been long dead. Verse number four. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed and weak within me, wrapped in darkness. The spirit of God is never weak, but the spirit of man, right, can be hurt and could be uh, weakened, but the spirit of God is never weakened. So I just want to make that clear. Therefore, my spirit, the psalmist is saying, the spirit that he's holding on to is overwhelmed and weak within me, wrapped in darkness. My heart grows numb within me. Very honest, right? The psalmist is going through some things. And this is where I want to camp out at. Verses 5 and 6. Verse number 5 says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you, God, have done. I ponder the work of your hands. See, now he's realizing some things. Although his current situation is bleak, his his past is like kind of rocky and messed up. Now he's remembering the days of old. He's meditating on all that God has done. He's pondering the work of God's hands. Verse number six, I reach out my hands to you. My throat thirsts for you as a parched land, thirsts for water. Selah. That word selah means ponder and think about what God has done. So let's think about it. Let's think back. To the the times that God has taken us out of the worst times in our lives. Let's think back at the times that you needed God and I needed God and he came through. He might have not came through the way I wanted him to come through, but he definitely came through. You ever prayed to God and you needed him like yesterday and he shows up like three days later? Well, our timing and God's timing are not the same. The Bible says one day to God could be like a thousand years. One day to us could feel like a hundred years when we need and and with desperation for God to make a move. Amen. But God is not slow. He doesn't slack. He doesn't weaken. He's never late. He's always on time. But we need to remember the days, you know, some people say back in the day, remember back when the days of old meditate on what God has done. Think about it. Think back. And make it clear in your mind. Wait, if God did it for me 
in the past. He could do it for me in the future. If God did it for those people, he could do it for me. If God did it for you, he could do it for me. Think back at the hand of God over your life and over my life. Think back at the days of old. Meditate on what God has done. Ponder the work of God's hands. I think this is the only time that we could benefit from thinking to the past by looking back when we're looking at the hand of God working in our lives. That's the only time it will benefit us to look back. That's the only time I could see that looking at my past will benefit me. When I see how God has worked all through, he has been there all through the time. Even when I didn't believe in him, he believed in me. Even if you don't believe in him, he believes in you. He created you. In his image, he created you. Now, yeah, we're born into sin. We're born into iniquity. We're born hell-bent, people say. But God gives us, everybody, he gives us all the opportunity to get back right and right standing with him. So we can have a born-again experience. We're born once in the flesh, right? But we need to be born again in the spirit so that way the flesh, right, won't be able to dominate any longer. The flesh is a monster. Will it benefit you to look back? Only when you can ponder what God has done. Reaching out your hands for God. Amen. Reaching out and letting God know, listen, I need you. You've done it for me in the past, but this is my current situation. What I'm going through right now. A lot of people don't realize the power they have in their prayer to the Lord of heaven and earth, right? To the God of war, the Prince of Peace, right? Almighty God, wonderful counselor. He is Yeshua HaMashiach. He is God Almighty. He is the Savior. He is the Lord. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and He's coming back soon. But in the meantime, pray. Ask, seek, knock. He wants us to continuously be in communication with Him. The beautiful thing about God is that he doesn't force no communication. He doesn't force us to serve him. He doesn't force us to believe in him. He doesn't force us to pray. None of that. But when you think back and say, man, it couldn't have been the devil that got me out of this situation. It couldn't have been the Santeria witchcraft that, you know, people are in that got me out of the situation. It had to be God through his kindness, through his grace, through his mercy over my life and over your life. Think back. And see the hand of God, the fingerprint of God all over your life. You might be saying, well, not me saying I never believed in God. So it had no part. He had no parts to play in it. But like I said earlier, you might not believe in the Heavenly Father, but the Heavenly Father believes in you. Amen. He's just waiting on us to make the move in the right direction. Does God want you to live in the past? Absolutely not. But what he will show us from our past is that he's been there. All along, people was like, "Ah, you don't know my testimony." I probably, I know I don't know everybody's testimony. I know my testimony though, and you know your testimony. You know what you're currently facing right now. You know when the enemies are trying to act up in your life. You know things are 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 crazy and real sometimes, and you're like nobody's understanding you. But God, when you call out to God and say, "Hear my prayer, O Lord. Hear my prayer, Lord Jesus. This is what I'm going through." And It's weird to me that the psalmist would say, do not enter into judgment with your servant. It's like he's saying, I know these people are doing this to me, but you know what I've done to them. You know what I've done to myself. You know what I've done to others. Please don't judge me based upon that. So he's relying on God being the God of grace over his life. I I prayed for things that I know I didn't deserve. What about you? Amen. Amen. And at the moment that I prayed, I might have been in a certain situation where I was hindering my own process. I was hindering my own prayers. What about you? You ever been to a place where you say, God, look at those people, what they're doing to me. Meanwhile, you're doing something to somebody else in a similar way or the same way or even hurting yourself. So God won't judge us, right, based upon what we think he's going to judge us on. God will base us on basic judgment and righteousness and holiness. Amen. Some two words that kind of like are uh, that the church, for whatever reason, is avoiding righteousness and holiness. It's still a thing. It's still in the scriptures. Amen. Because we're justified. The enemy, everybody has enemies. So we have a lot in common, ladies and gentlemen. We all have the enemy of the world system, pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the devil. We all have the enemies. 
we all have these enemies that if we're not careful, uh, they're going to want to trample us. They're going to want to take our life. They're going to want us to go to the ground. They're going to want us to be dead. Um, they want us to dwell in dark places. And if you were with me yesterday, you know that we don't walk in the dark anymore. We walk in the light. Like those who have been long dead, that's what the enemy wants for the the enemy of our soul wants us to be spiritually dead. Doesn't want us to have any concern or any kind of relation or any kind of attachment to the holiness of God, to his word. Doesn't want us to study the Bible, doesn't want us to connect with the body of Christ, doesn't want us to go to church, doesn't want us to pray, doesn't want us to do anything. He wants us to be in a dark place like those who have been long dead. So he also wants to see your spirit overwhelmed. And if you think about it, Jesus says for us to cast all our cares unto him, to carry our burdens and put it at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't want us to have these weights on our shoulders. He doesn't want us to have these weights in our lives. He wants us to live a free life, a life that is lightweight. In other words, we can't put all the burdens on our shoulders and act like we don't have any savior or any father to give it to. That he will relieve the pressure. My heart grows numb within me. How many people's heart ever been to a place where you're like numb? You don't feel nothing no more. You're like, you know what? All this stuff is happening. God is not hearing me. You know, some people have that. They feel that way. I felt that way. And you get to a place where it's numb. That's a very dangerous place to be. It's almost close to being lukewarm. Either you're hot or cold, but please don't be lukewarm. Make a decision. Either trust in God or don't trust in him at all. Either have faith in the Lord Jesus or don't have faith in him at all. Either believe in the word or don't believe in the word at all. That way you could be either hot or cold. But if you're like um, trying to play both sides, um, that's a place where you're being, your heart is numb and you're like lukewarm. You're in the middle somewhere. It's like a, you know, a Bible, uh, some kind of a, a Bible state that you, oh, I believe these words, I believe these scriptures, but I don't believe these anymore. Like you're having a dilemma. You're having, it's like um, a biblical bipolarness. I don't know if that's a, even a thing. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to make a decision based on, not based on what you can see all the time, but based on what you know to be true. Because even when you don't see something, when you ask God, when you're praying, amen, when you're thinking back of the hand of God over your life, you'd be like, that had to be God. That had to be his grace over my life. That had to be his protection. That had to be his mercy. That had to be his deliverance. That had to be on account of somebody praying for you and praying for me. It's a lot of things, a lot of stories I could sit down and tell you. So I don't know how I got out of this situation. I don't know how I got out of that situation. And it wasn't the enemy that wanted to save me. It was the enemy that's trying to kill me. So it wasn't him that rescued me out of that situation. It wasn't the, you know, the other stuff in the spiritual realm that you know, kept me safe. It was actually God all along. The praise of the righteous people on this planet Earth availeth much. So when you pray for something or for somebody, trust me, yesterday in our men's group, um, last week we had prayed for, or a couple of weeks ago, we had prayed for a man of God that was in a situation that desperately needed our prayers. He, he said, listen, pray for your brother, pray for me. Finally, yesterday he shows up. And he said, I felt the prayers of the brothers. How do you explain that? That somebody felt the prayers of his brothers. How do you explain that? Because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. When we put out a prayer there and we directing it toward God and we're lining up with his will and purpose and the prayer is actually reaching his ears, get ready. When you think about it, when you think back at prayers that you prayed to statues, to idols, we prayed to some kind of, you know, demon or Santeria worship or voodoo or whatever. You were praying to some other deity or some other spiritual being. Think about what happened when you did that compared to when you prayed to the Lord Jesus, to God, to the God of heaven and earth, to God Almighty. What happens when you pray to him? Things really happen. You pray to the other things, idols, whatever. Really, things things might happen, but you have kind of like control over the happenings. You know, a lot of times when I'm praying to God, I know for sure I don't have any control over what I'm praying for. That's why I'm praying to God, my Father in heaven and earth of heaven and earth. 
We have the power of prayer. We have the word of God. We have the ability to think back and ponder on what God has done already in our lives. So what if he does, whatever we see in the scriptures that he did for the prophets, the people of God in the past, the Israelites, or all those people in the scriptures, uh, since he's no respecter of persons, when we come to the New Testament, we see the Lord Jesus, which is the exact image of the Father, amen, in a form of a man. We kind of know that we have parts of those promises that Abraham was given. We, we're a part of the lineage. We're a part of the inheritance because Jesus didn't come to you know, break any law. He didn't break any. He didn't come to abolish the law of God. He didn't break any of the laws or destroy any of it. He came to complete it. So now we have the complete work of what the Old Testament was speaking of and prophesying about through the prophets, through the people, through the stories in the Bible, the scriptures, Jonah, Joseph, all the characters, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, everybody that you read about in the Old Testament was kind of like pointing to the God of the New Testament, which is the same God, by the way, a different form. So we have one God, three persons. We have Father, we have the Son, and we have Holy Spirit. And quick Bible trivia. If you're into first mentions, this is a question, Bible trivia. Who was mentioned? What order was it mentioned in the Old Testament? Was it Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or was it Father, Spirit, and Son? I'll leave that open question right there. Amen. It's interesting stuff if you believe in first mentions in the scriptures. I believe in the order of God. If God says something in an order, that's the order I believe. Amen. So your enemy and my enemy, right? Because we have that in common. We all have enemies. Chases you. Chases me. Sometimes he'll knock me down. But the, the thing about when an enemy knocks me down or distracts me is that I have Holy Spirit God in me and I get back up. And I think that makes him even more mad. I know if I, if I was trying to attack somebody and back in the day, if I want to think back real quick, um, we was all in a circle and there was a man there that he wasn't, you know, all there. He was older than us. He was built man, strong man. And he was in our circle. And I think we were drinking alcohol or whatever. And one of my friends slapped him in the back of the neck really hard and then pointed at me. As if I did it. And man, that man took a, a, a swing at me that if I had not moved, I would have probably had a broken jaw. So I quickly moved out of reflex, hit him with a one-two, you know, a left and a right, boom, knocked him down. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm strong, right? Guess what happened? He got back up. And when he got back up, I was like, man, I gave him all I had. And he got back up. Empowered by the spirit of this world. How much more that if we catch a one, two, two piece and get knocked down, how much more are we able to get back up? Right. We have the power of Holy Spirit. We got the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same spirit that lives in me and you. If you put your heart and you put your life and you put your faith in the Lord Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. And you imagine that we get up even when the enemy throws us. All the punches and he throws out everything at us. He knocks us down to the ground. We have the ability to get up. Even if he's trying to force you to live in darkness, we have the opportunity to go into the light. And this version of the scripture, the psalmist says, I am losing all hope. Have you ever been there? Because <clears throat> the enemy is going to attack your faith. He's going to attack your hope, your trust and everything. He's going to try to distract you. <clears throat> so when an enemy is at a at a level trying to get at you, you might be losing all hope. You might be paralyzed with fear. This is what the psalmist is going through. And we could relate to some of these things, if not all of these things, if you're honest and if you've gone through anything in your life. I remember the days of old now. So he says, I'm losing all hope, I'm paralyzed with fear, but now I'm going to look back and ponder and remember all the great works of God and think about what he has done in my life. And that will definitely cause you to lift up your hands and be like, okay, I know I'm going through pain, struggle, I'm getting knocked down by the enemy. He's trying to put me in dark places, but you can lift up your hands in prayer and you can ask the God who got you through it before to get you through it now, whatever that it is, whatever that situation is going on. And forget the naysayers. 
Or you praying to an unknown God or an invisible God that you can't feel, that you can't touch, that you can't see. Come on, man. It's more of a reality of an invisible God, a visible God than the reality that people say that they have in their statues and their idols that they can visibly see. So I'm not, you know, I'm way over that. I'm past that. Yes, he's an invisible God, but he made his his presence known. He revealed himself through the Son by way of the a form of a man, the name Jesus Christ, the Lord. He showed up, revealed himself, and he continues to reveal himself to all those right now who are going through some things, right? Who are facing death situations, life and death situations. He'll reveal himself to those who are seeking after truth, who are those who are seeking after God, the true, living, holy, righteous, loving, faithful God. He will reveal himself. He continues to do that. His testimonies all around the world of people looking for God or looking for truth and on a pursuit of truth. And Jesus shows up, reveals himself in their lives, transforms them, changes them, and restores them and redeems them and gives them the born again experience. This is not a make believe story. This is not all uh, part of my imagination. I don't um, try to recreate a story that's not in the scriptures just to be, you know, or I have a different revelation. I don't do that stuff. If God wakes me up with a word, amen, I want to share it. Can't keep it all to myself. Amen. I got this fire shut up in my bones, that Jeremiah fire. Amen. I just want to put it out there because I know if I contain or I try to contain it, it's going to it's going to backfire on me. I'm going to just know stuff and not share what I know. God wants to share his wisdom. God wants to share. He doesn't share his glory. Amen. But he will show you his glory. Amen. And you can walk in his glory. But he won't share it. It's his glory. But he he wants us to find hope again when we're losing hope. He wants us to get up when we feel paralyzed with fear. He wants us to get up in boldness. Amen. He's listening. He wants us to look back at what he has done in your life and in my life. That way, we could see, wow, he's been there all along. We have this Selah moment. We ponder and think about God's greatness, his faithfulness. Amen. There's nothing that God cannot do. Isn't that incredible? God could do everything I can't. So there's nothing impossible for God. We need to realize that and know that. Amen. And I hope and pray that you take Psalm 143, you read verses 1 to 6, or read the whole psalm for yourself. And realize this this is a real person going through real situations, but then turning to a real God who he remembers in his past and looks back. And he says, I'm going to look back at what you have done in my past so that way I can know that you're here in the present and you can take me into the future. So I hope you were blessed by this morning, Devo. Amen. Thinking back, I think it will only benefit you when you think and look back when you see God in your past. Amen. He doesn't want us to live there, amen, but we can visit the past to see what he has done in our past, and we know that we're secure in our future. So God bless you all, God keep you all, and remember always that God is good. Peace.